Hello, I'm Nicole Northgarden, and this is Nicole Northgarden Stitches. Here we go. Hello, you all. I hope you're doing well. I am here in the craft room, and it's a little warm, so if I seem flushed, that is why. Um, it's 80 degrees here in Minnesota. Um, that's very unusual. So the current date, I think it's April 13th. It's Saturday. Yes, it's April 13th, and... Minnesota usually like more often than not we still have some ice on the lakes and there's this date called the ice out date which means the date when all the ice is gone from the lakes and oftentimes that's like now but our ice out was like back in March and it's 80 degrees so <laughs> and it was like real it's been really nice all week it was like in the 50s and 60s so I'm not complaining, but it is a little warm because, you know, we're not running air conditioning or anything yet. We just have the windows open, which also, if you hear a little more noise during this video, that is why. Um, yes, so we're having lovely weather. It is supposed to still get cold next week, like in the 30s. Um, so I'm not, I wanted to put pansies out, which are like the first flower I can usually put out, but I'm a little worried about next week. So I'm going to wait probably till after that little cold snap that we're about to have. And then I'll put some pansies out and then we don't do the rest of our planting really till like mid May. So maybe a little earlier this year, if it like, sorry, my nose is itchy because of the allergens. If it gets a little warmer and then it stays warm, I might do my flowers a little early, but we will see. Okay. So I haven't made a video in about a month, but I said I would probably only be doing once per month, which is fine. I've had a ton of time to stitch. I had a little time off from work. So I've been getting a lot done. And during my last video, I told you I had a goal for Easter. So I will update you on what happened with that. Um, I have my notes here. So I have some full finishes. I have some stitch finishes. I have my works in progress to show you. And then I have a haul, which actually I'm gonna include some library books and then some stuff that I bought at Hobby Lobby. I actually already recorded that haul, so I'm gonna insert that as footage. And then I have a Stitchville haul, which very sadly in the last month, Stitchville is my local needlework shop and recently found out they lost their lease and are closing. So the nearest one is called Welcome Stitchery up in Blue Earth. I've not been there ever. I'm pretty sure it's, I think it's an hour and a half. So um, I hear it's worth the drive. So maybe Chris and I, We'll go on an adventure a few times a year. I mean, until recently, I try not to go to Stitchville too often because it's impossible to go in there and not spend a bunch of money. <laughs> so maybe it's better that it, the local one is now an hour and a half away, but I will definitely be checking out Welcome Stitchery, but I'm very sad about Stitchville. Um, I was able to go in recently. That's the hall I will show you. Um, my mother-in-law was here this week, by the way. Um, she actually just left today. And we went to Stitchville together and I was able to talk to the owner. I was able to thank her because sometimes I've mentioned to you guys before, like sometimes if I would find a pattern and I get stuck on like picking a floss or a fabric, she was always very helpful. If not her, her staff was always there and was very helpful. So it was a lovely shop. So I'm really sad about that, but I totally understand because she moved the, to her current location like six years ago. Um, from another location, I think in the same town. So the town is called Minnetonka, but she was like further west. And then she recent, sorry, my neighbor's dog is barking, but she, then she moved to the current location like six years ago. And it's so much stuff. She's like, I don't have another move in me. I'm like, yeah, that's a lot of stuff. That's a big undertaking to, you know, move, move a location. So she's going to retire and we are all very sad, but totally understand. But I will show you my, what will probably be my last Stitchville haul, although I'm thinking about going back maybe one more time this coming week. And if I do, obviously I will show you that haul in my next video. Okay, there go my dogs, hold on. Okay, so let's start with my full finishes. Um, okay, so let's see. I'll start with Easter, why not? So I told you in the last video, I mentioned that I had found a pattern in an old magazine for little egg shaped um, napkin rings, I guess, or you make them into napkin rings. And I really wanted to try to get eight done for Easter. Didn't know if I would because I was only giving myself like three and a half weeks to get it done, but I got them done. <laughs> I was stitching until the meal, basically, like 
I was stitching Easter morning to finish the last, I like, I did them all, all seven, and I fully finished them the night before Easter. And then on Easter morning, I was still stitching the last one. And I figured, I was like, you know what? The last one will be mine. If it doesn't get done, that's okay. At least I'll have seven for everyone else. But I got them all done. So I will show these to you. I'm gonna show them each to you, but I'll show them like two at a time because they're all a little bit different. So, oh, and what I wound up doing, hold on. The first one I did, I did as full cross, which when I say that for anyone who's not a cross stitcher, that means both parts of the X. So every cross stitch looks like this. Um, but, and so far on the first one, I did every cross stitch like this. And then I realized, you know what, I can just do, I can double the amount of thread. So I actually used on the rest of them, four strands of floss and just did it like needlepoint. And that enabled me to just do one side of each X, which cuts your time in half. Basically, it took me half the time to get them all done. So technically, I guess they're like needlepoint on plastic canvas, but that's fine. Um, so here's the first one. This was the full cross stitch one. But then I'll show you, this is a very similar one, but in the just the half cross. So you can barely tell the difference. And for the non-stitchers at the table, they certainly don't know. And so all I did was, so I did it on plastic canvas, um, which I like, I think the models might've been stitched on paper. I wanted them to be more durable. This way I can like reuse them, um, you know, in other years. So that is plastic canvas. And then I just covered the back in felt, which I got from Hobby Lobby, 25 cents a sheet. I think I only used one sheet. And then I just used ribbon that I also got at Hobby Lobby. So, and those, those things might be in my haul. So you might be seeing this ahead of <laughs> what you'll, some of what you'll see in the haul, but that's okay. And if I, if you catch me looking at the wrong spot, I switched my camera set up a little bit. So I have to look at a different place on my camera and I keep forgetting. So sorry about that. Anyway, so those are the first two and actually I made a few like that. Yeah. Um, so I made four with the flowers. And then I did two, I, so then I found another pattern in um, a different book or in the back of that book. It might've been that book, but just the back of that book. And it had like ducks on an egg. So I just pulled, I kept the same, this is very close to the original, or this one is actually the original pattern with all the original colors. But I kept a lot of similarness between the eggs. I just changed the motif in the middle for some of them. So this, these have two ducks kind of like kissing and then for these, and I think this is the last one I did. Um, and I realized at the end, I should have done all the eyes blue. It, just, it shows up so much better. The original of the ducks showed a brown eye, but the blue eye was much better, which I didn't realize till the very last one that I was making. But um, yeah, so these, for the last two, I just did a single duck. Oops, something on the back of that one. So yeah. So I thought they were really cute and they went really well with my Easter table, which I actually will insert a little footage that I took for you so you can see what they look like on my Easter table. I'll insert that here. Here we go. Here's the Easter table. And here are my finished napkin holder, napkin rings. I guess they're napkin rings. I finally got all of them done. And then I told you before, this cross stitch tablecloth is not, I didn't cross stitch it. It's vintage. I saved it from somewhere. The family is in the room with me. Everyone say hi. Bye. I told them they had to be quiet and not say anything embarrassing for three minutes. <laughs> we did a really good job. Right? You're doing a great job. Thank you. Anyway, all right, so that's Easter table. Yay. On to the next thing, which is we're just doing food prep and then we'll eat. So that's my Easter table. I was so pleased with it. I just loved how it turned out. All right, then other full finishes. I did finish this one off. You saw me stitching this for Valentine's Day. This was by You and I Designs. And I stitched with my own colors from Stash, although I kept it similar to what they had originally done. This is a thrifted frame, not a frame, but a picture block. It's meant to hold a photograph, but I just, you know, instead did this. And what I actually wanted to do, I wanted to use a washer and a magnet to get it, because it was sticking out a little bit from the block. Um, but I did, I couldn't find my flat, my flatter magnets and my washers. I have to get more, I guess. Um, so, cause what you do is you put a washer on your piece and a magnet on the block, and then you could actually change it out. So I could have changed it out, but I'm like, you know what? This is very like 
particular colors. I'm probably not going to change this very often. So I just wound up putting a little um, blob of hot glue just to keep it on the frame better. I can still take it off if I really want to, but um, yeah. So yeah, I was really pleased with that. That is the original sticker, I think, from it. But really pleased with this. This is going down in my bedroom. Um, yeah, like it down there. Okay, and the other thing I got, this is actually part of my haul from Stitchville, but I'll show it to you now. You remember Snow Joe? Well, at Stitchville, I was going to make him into a pillow um, with blue gingham fabric, but then <laughs> I found this at Stitchville, and because they're closing, they have 25% off of everything, and so I got this pillow for, um, I think it was, let's see, two, four, it was like $12, which I thought was a really good deal. I'm like, you know what, for the trouble, I'm just going to get the pillow and then they make it so that you can slip in your piece. So I actually, I could exchange this with like an Easter piece or whatever, if I wanted to, um, I could do like some Christmas thing if I wanted to do like, instead of just a snowman, a Christmas tree. But, um, yeah, I really like him. Um, I don't have plans to change it out right now. I don't have anything I'd want to slip in there. I might do something with flowers or even like a 4th of July piece would actually be cute. Cause that would still go with the blue and that would, you know, so this is in future, in the future. That's something I might consider doing, but for now he's snow Joe and I didn't have to finish him. I just cut him out. <laughs> so those are my three fully finished pieces. Um, I say three, you know, there were eight eggs, but I'm counting them as one. <laughs> okay, then let's move on to my stitched finishes. So these I recently finished. Oh, I should, I had totally fallen. Okay, first of all, full disclosure, I totally fell off the wagon with my temperature stitch. I just did. I don't know. I just, I haven't been able to keep up on it. And then I got so far behind. Maybe I'll make it up or maybe I'll just uh, pick up where I left off next year. I don't know. I'm sure the weather will be similar. Who knows? Maybe I'll still get around to it. I haven't decided yet. But anyway, I also had fallen off the wagon with my um, book of days. But I got back on. I'm doing it again. So I kind of just, I here's what happened. I went to California and I lost my rhythm with a lot of things. So my, February, um, you can tell that like, it's hey, this is where I went away and then there's nothing. So, and then March is completely empty. I did nothing. I didn't write anything down in March. That's okay. But we're back to it in April. And, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so I had a, st oh, oh, I got it. I didn't write that down. I should show you, I have a new start. That, you know, I guess you'll see it kind of, well, I can show you when I do my whips because I only have one. And then I had, um, my nest and eggs was finished on April 7th and what's my other finish? I didn't write down my mushroom finish. My mushroom finish was on the 11th. I should have written that down. So this was where I finished the mushroom, which I'm about to show you. I gave it away. That's okay. All right. So this is nest and eggs. I started this last year. I looked it up. Um, I believe it was in March of, of 2023. It was from a leisure art book called nature. And this was really hard and I'm so glad it's done. I really like it. And hopefully by the next video, I will have it framed for you, which I sort of wanted to do, um, by this video, but I just didn't get around to it. So, so there you go. That is nest and eggs. And the reason it was hard is I, this is a linen, first of all, and I believe it's 20 count and it was really tiny and I should have used one thread, one piece of floss, but I used two, which made it very tight and just hard to do. The other thing I didn't do, you can see there's like these little ropes or t pieces of twine. Sorry, the dogs are barking. Um, kind of, can you see that in the nest? And the original had it um, backstitched. And I was like, that is so much backstitching. I'm not doing it. The only backstitching I did is on the leaves because I really wanted them to stand out a little bit better. So I backstitched those and that was it. And then um, for the most part, I used the called for colors. Um, some of the shades were really close. And so if I was like tired, I would just do the one color for like a section. It was just, it was not my favorite pattern. Let's just say it was a lot of confetti, which is like boop, boop, boop. Like where you do one stitch, this color, one stitch, co this color, three stitches of the same color and then different colors. It was a pain. So 
glad it's done. I really like it. It's very pretty and it's going to look very pretty in my bedroom, but I would never stitch that again. And that is the complete opposite of what I'm about to show you next. This was a kit, Live Simply, which I should show you the kit. What did I do with it? Hold on. Please hold. So this is the kit. Um, I'm going to try to show you without the glare. That is um, what the kit was like. It's my first cross, my first stitch by Bucilla. I found it on eBay. This was inspired by Cat Crazy Creations. Um, I think her Instagram is cat crazy creations underscore crafts and on YouTube. I think she's just cat crazy creations. I love to watch her, um, YouTube, her floss tube. And she did this kit and I just loved it because I love the little mushrooms right now. I mean, I've always loved them, but now they're really popular and easier to find. So I've been really enjoying that. So I really wanted to do this and this was such an easy and enjoyable stitch. Um, the kit came with a piece of 14 count fabric. I don't like to stitch on 14 count. When I do 14 count, which I think Snow Joe and it was 14, I like to do three threads. And because it's a kit, I didn't know. And now looking back, I would have had enough. I didn't know if I would have enough floss. Um, and it didn't have the DMC colors. It only had like a different kind of floss numbers listed. So I was like, you know what? I want to do two threads, not three. I'm going to make the fabric smaller. And so I've really been enjoying, you know, as you stitch more and more, I don't know if you go through periods or you just find a fabric that you really like. I really like 18 count Ada. I know a lot of people love linen. I just, I, I need to get a better magnifier. I have trouble seeing the little holes, but Ada is very enjoyable to me. And 18 count, I like the way my stitches look. Some people use one piece of floss on, on um, 18 count. I like to use two because I like my stitches to look really full, at least for this type of stitch, like a more modern piece. If I do a primitive piece, then I don't mind it looking a little thinner. It's just a preference thing. But for these more modern pieces, I like it to be like really bold and for my stitches to really, you know, look good and full. And so that's why I use two pieces of floss on 18 Count Ada. And I've just really been enjoying this. This was a piece from my stash. I think it was called like Antique White. The original was white, but I didn't have any white. So I like how this turned out. And I think I showed this, well, I definitely showed it in a thrift haul. Maybe I didn't show it here. Um, I got this fabric out thrifting. It's a little dot, like a red with white dots. I think it's so cute. So I am actually going to use this. So I'm going to, I'm going to make this into a flat like this. And then I'm going to back it with that. And then I'm going to put it in a little mini easel that I have and I'm going to put it under a cloche, like a specimen, like a mushroom specimen. I think it's gonna look so cute. I'm gonna put that in my bedroom. So hopefully by the next video, I will have that done. It's on my list of things to do, hopefully tomorrow, Sunday, so. Okay, so those are my two stitch finishes. Um, yeah, oh, allergies. Okay, so let's move on to my whips. Hold on a second. Okay, actually, before I get to my whips, I want to show you a project that I kitted up because my intention is to start this in the next few days. I had originally thought I would have it started before this video to be able to show you a new start. But I have a goal on flea market flowers that I'm trying to meet, which I'll tell you about in a minute. And then once I meet that goal, then I'm planning to start this. So it will be started before my next video, but I want to just show it to you because I'm excited about it. It's called Cross Stitcher in Residence, and it's a Lizzie Kate from the early 2000s. I'm trying to show you without the glare. There we go. I think it's so cute. And the called for colors are listed in sampler threads and also in DMC. I had most of the sampler threads, and then I'm so I'm using mostly sampler threads, but then I'm going to substitute with two of the called for DMCs because I didn't have those um, sampler thread colors. So here's the palette um, of the sampler threads, pretty colors. And then I want to show you the pattern. Here are the two DMC colors that I'm going to use. And again, like I said, these were called for. It's just that I didn't have the called for sampler thread. So I'm substituting with the called for DMCs. So I didn't change anything from the designer. Um, I'm just mixing sampler threads and DMC because I'm really trying to not buy unless I really want like something. You know what I mean? I'm trying to use my stash as much as I can. So that I will hopefully have a new start 
for you to show you in my next video. Okay, let's move on to my whips. Oh, I have some exciting news. Oh, yes, let's start with that. So the last time, I think it was the last video. Hmm, I think it was the last video or maybe two videos ago. I don't remember. But I had shown you a pattern that I designed for a sampler for me and Chris, that's my husband, um, to for like to represent our marriage in 1997. And I designed it before we had any children. But there was like a band that I just left blank. I think I couldn't decide what I wanted to do in there. So then I asked all of you like for ideas. And several of you said I should do something to represent either our family or our children, et cetera, et cetera. So I went with the family idea. And this is what I came up with. Um, so I hope you can see that it's light because it's in pencil, but I designed us as a family and um, I have stitched Chris so far and I've started myself. So this is Chris, my husband, and then I started myself and this will be Maddie here. That's my oldest, Molly, Gabriel, Hannah, and I put their birth years. I don't know if you can see that, but I put their birth years over each of their heads. So that was my idea. And then I might put our pets. The problem is like our pets, some of them have passed, like our dogs. I would put our dogs. Some of them have passed. And I don't know if I want to represent this at a certain time. I hate to stitch and not put our current dogs on. So I haven't figured that out yet. I might just not do the pets or I might do a, a band on the bottom where I can like add pets as we have them. So that's another thought I have. Um, but I'm going to show you what it looks like. So this is, let me move my needle minder because it's right in the middle. There we go. So this was all stitched except for the family. So you can see I already put our wedding date and the colors are totally 1998, <laughs> which is probably when I stitched and designed this, designed and stitched this. But this is Chris in cross stitch. Isn't he adorable? I think it looks just like him. If you know my husband, that looks just like him. <laughs> and I am doing this two threads. You can see how thin it is. If I were to decide how to stitch it now, I would probably do three threads on this. I'm pretty sure this is 14 or 16 count. Um, but I want, I don't want it to look like it was stitched 20 years apart. So I'm just doing it in the same style that I did the original stitching, which looked thinner. You can see in the houses, especially it just looks Thin, like not great coverage. You could see a lot of the fabric through the stitching. That's what I'm talking about. And so I'm just doing the same thing on the people. Um, I had originally stitched my shirt in green. I actually am going to take that out because you can't see the back stitching. And so I'll just look like a blob instead of with all the detail of the arms. So I want to change that. I'm probably going to make it a lighter green color. Um, or a, a lighter gray. I love gray. That's my favorite color. Orange is Chris's favorite color. That's why I made his shirt orange. So I might do gray. If that's my favorite color. Green is my next favorite color. So we'll see. But either way, I want it to be a lighter color so that you'll be able to see the details. So thank you to all of you who made suggestions. And in particular, thank you to those who suggested that I do our family. I think that's a fabulous idea. Um, I will show you the book. I got a book from the library. That's how I wound up at the library um, looking for cross stitch books because I wanted to find a book that would have motifs that I could reproduce um, on my sampler. And so I found one. So I'll show that to you um, in a little bit. So that was my exciting, exciting thing to accomplish. Um, okay, this is Jack Rabbit. And it is by, let's see, I always forget the name, Cottage. Uh, cottage garden samplings. So this is what the pattern looks like. You, I'm sure you've seen this if you're a cross stitcher around floss tube. I think he's so darling. This is going to take me so much longer than I thought though, because I don't know if you can see, but there's like this quilt pattern in his body and it just takes a long time to stitch. So I'm actually doing this, um, by 10 by 10 section, if that makes sense to you. For people who do like full coverage pieces, you might understand. Um, but each, each every pattern is, is um, divided into these 10 by 10 sections. I can kind of, I can show you really fast. Um, you can kind of see the squares 
And so I, that's how I'm keeping track of where I am because this is tough. It's almost, he's like full coverage for a bit, you know? So um, that is taking a long time. So I'm not going to have any pressure on myself to finish him. I'm just doing a little, um, you know, a little a week and we'll see how far I get. So I haven't made a ton of progress because of Easter. I haven't made a ton of progress on my whips because of the Easter project. Like that took most of March. Like I was really focusing on that project because I really wanted them done for Easter. So everything else kind of took the back burner, went on the back burner. But I did get a little of his body started. And I don't remember, again, I'll insert a picture so we could see where I was. But yeah. So I love the piece and I love the colors. Um, but it's just going to take forever. And I am doing him mostly in DMC. I have, um, I think, two or three colors that are sampler threads, I think. Let's see. Is it sampler? Um, simply Shaker and sampler threads are, uh, oh my gosh, I have one of each. Weeks dye work. I have one Weeks dye works, one Simply Shaker, and one sampler threads. This was the piece where I went to Stitchville and I was having trouble picking colors and the owner helped me out. Sad face, sad face. I'm very sad about my shop closing, about the shop, not my shop, the shop I shop at closing. So anyway, okay. And the last thing I've been working on, um, cause my, you know, I had all those finishes. So it's, I've been doing a lot. I've been trying to get stuff done. Um, so I don't have a ton of whips that I've been working on, but the last one is flea market flowers. And so this was the one that one of you sent to me. Thank you so much. Um, it's by It's So Emma Stitchery, and it's Lori Holt of Be In My Bonnet, the designer. I think it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm going to hang it on this wall when it's done. I'm super excited about that. But I will tell you honestly, it's not the most exciting stitch to do because it's basically, if you can tell, it's all the same shape petal just a million times in a few different colors. So to deal with that, so that I don't get burnt out, I have divided the pattern, which I can show you because I did it on the cover. I made a copy of the cover and then I divided it by the months. And so I had intended to be done with this flower and these by the end of March and then this by the end of April. But because I was stitching my napkin hole rings, um, I got really behind. So I did get this flower done. I haven't touched these, but then I was like, you know what? I'm here. I'm just going to start here. So my goal now, and this is what I was mentioning before, this is my goal. By the end of April, I want to be done with these. So I'm actually, I'm not even leaving it for April. I'm just in the next few days here, I am power stitching. I'm focusing on this and this. And once that's done, then I'm going to let myself start my cross stitcher in residence. So that is my plan. Um, and then there's another piece from the April, I mean, from the spring Just Cross Stitch magazine that I also would really like to start. And I've had a few finishes, so I feel like I can start, you know, one or two new projects and that would be fine. Um, it won't be like overwhelming. And then if I'm on track, with this especially. So yeah, so that's my goal is to get this whole thing done, hopefully by the mid middle of next week, like by like the 16th, 17th. And then I'll start my projects, my um, cross stitcher resident in residence, and then the other one, the uh, what is it? Um, no, oh, I forget. Oh boy, I don't even know where my magazine went. Where is it? Oh, here, this is the one. Um, yeah, I'll sh I'll just really quickly show you the one. I've I've shown it before, but now I have everything, which I will show you as part of my haul, I believe. Um, hold on. Miss Bunny's Market is the other spring one I want to work on. Um, yeah, I have a container like that. I have flowers. I really want to get this stitch so I can use it in my decor. Um, and it, by the time I get it done, it might, it probably won't be done for this year, but I would like to at least get a good start on it. Um, and then I can use it in my spring decor next year. So Easter just kind of, the Easter project kind of got, you know, got in the way of everything. Not in the way. I'm so, I was so glad to do it and happy to have it done. Um, but you know, it, everything else kind of got delayed. So anyway, that's okay. Okay. 
So that is, that's all my whips. Let me put this away and then I will show you my haul. Oh, and before I finish up, I did want to show you this. I don't know if, I don't think I ever showed you this. This is from Hobby Lobby. This is what I keep my needles and my scissors and my needle threader in. Um, it's great. This is magnetic and it just really helps you keep track of all your little needles and stuff. So if you're looking for something, and I can just easily slip it into whatever project bag I'm working with, it's just super useful. Um, better, I think it's better than a pouch because nothing, you know, the needles then don't get lost in the bottom. So anyway, I love it. Found it at Hobby Lobby. I think it was six dollars. Um, super useful. I'm sure it's online. Here's the Art Bin Slimline Magnetic Box. If that's something you're interested in, it's um, been really great. I've really liked it. Okay, let's move on to haul. I'm gonna start with my library books and then I will insert the footage of my Hobby Lobby haul and then I will show you my Stitch Fill haul. So, okay, so this is the book that I went to the library for. It's Quick and Clever Cross Stitch, eight sampler templates with over 1000 picks pick and mix motifs. So the point of this, and not like I'm stealing someone's design, this book was designed with the intention of allowing people to design their own samplers. So it was perfect for me. I think it was published, oh, 2006. They do have it on thrift books for like $5. Um, I didn't really want to buy it and I was really happy when Hennepin County Library, that's my county, um, had it. So yeah, so I, I got that book. And then while I was there, of course I had to look through everything else that was there. So I got this one, 1000 cross stitch motifs. And this one I got because it has dogs in it. And if I decide to do a dog band, like, so on that sampler, the dogs would go like on the bottom, maybe a fishbowl. Cause we've had a million fish over the years. That's something I was thinking of like a little fishbowl and then the dogs on either side. Um, if I decide to do that, this has dogs. So that's why I got that. And then um, this one I got, there's so many pretty things in here, but in particular, I loved this. Um, if you can see that, I love that strawberry pattern. So I just think it's so pretty, a little blue. I would do it just like that. I think it's so pretty, really different. So that was pretty, but then, oh my gosh, these books are so fabulous. Um, so is this the one? Hold on a second. No. Okay, Th these are fabulous. Um, look at this. Yeah, I don't wanna show you any patterns, but look at this bunny. I mean, it would take forever to stitch because again, it's plaid, but how cute is that? It's so different. And even the cover is just really different. So I am so pleased with these books, but this one, I am going to make coasters for myself. Um, let me get the, let me see if I could show it to you without showing the pattern. Yeah, uh, sort of. Okay, so let me cover, let me get something to cover it with. There. Okay, well, first of all, this is my favorite book that I got out of the library. So this one was called Modern Cross Stitch by Hannah Sturick. Love it. Um, lots of great ideas in here. But this is my absolute favorite book. Um, who's the author? Let's see, does it say C&T Productions, I think? C&T Publishing. It doesn't have an author. It's just called Modern Folk Art Cross Stitch. Look at that pillow on the front. There are several, several projects in here. Oh, I don't even have to show you. I can show you this. Several projects in here that I want to do. Several. Um, and I'm just going to work through them this year. So love that. But then these, these little, see these little pouches? I'm actually going to stitch them and make them into coasters. Oh, I'm so excited that I can use in my family room on the coffee table. So I just think they're so pretty. They're stitched on black Ada. So I'm gonna get myself some black 18 count Ada and I'm just gonna use DMC colors. They are so like Scandinavian looking, which is so fitting for where I live. I just love them, super happy. So this is a great book. If you don't have money to buy patterns, and you want to cross stitch, highly recommend this book. And I said to my husband, I'm like, I don't need to buy patterns. Like I bought a few, at, I bought two or three at, at um, Stitchville just because it's clo <clears throat> it's closing and I wanted something to like remember the store. About. But then I'm just going to work through the patterns in these books and in my magazines because he, 
patterns can get expensive. They're like 10 to $12 a piece. That's a lot of money. Plus you have to buy the fabric. Plus you have to buy the floss. You know, it's too much money. So um, yeah, I'm just going to work through what's in these books. I'm super excited about it. Okay, so that was that. Now I'm going to insert footage that I filmed when I went to Hobby Lobby. The reason I did this is because I was using some of the things that I found at Hobby Lobby and I just wanted to get it filmed while it was fresh in my mind. So let's go to that footage. Hello, sorry if this is a slightly funny angle, but I really wanted to film my cross stitch floss tube haul now because I know I'm going to forget what I got. And so I just want to film it and then I have it and then I can insert it into my video when I film another floss tube. So, um, cause I'm only doing a floss tube like once a month. So I'm definitely going to forget what I got or I'll have used it. Cause some of these are like time sensitive projects that I'm working on. So, um, there's two things I want to start there. One is just a straight up cross stitch, um, Oh, I can't show you the picture because it's on the phone. I'll try to insert a picture. It's from Just Cross Stitch. I showed it in my previous video. Um, it's called like Mary's Market Cart or something. Bunny Mark, not Mary. I don't remember. It's something with bunnies and they have a market cart. And so I really want to start that one. But then I also want to try, because I'm filming this before Easter, I would like to try to make these napkin eggs that are napkin ring that you make into like napkin rings with ribbon. I want to try to make those before Easter. I probably won't get it done, but I might get a few done and then I can kind of spread them out on the table. Um, so, but that's plastic, um, can plastic canvas, but in a 14 count. So I needed to go to Stitchville to get some supplies because I needed fabric for the market cart project. And then I came to Hobby Lobby, which is near Stitchville, um, because they had some of the things for the plastic Easter eggs. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I got from both of those places. I will start with Stitchville. Um, hold on one second. Okay. Oh, and I got something else really cute at Hobby Lobby that was on clearance. <laughs> An unplanned purchase. You know how those are. Okay. So at Stitchville, I got all my colors for the um, market cart. Oh no, I dropped them. I got all my colors for the market cart, um, project. I keep dropping them, but I want you to be able to see the palette. It's very pretty and very springy and like they're watering flowers. So that's why I feel like it's not like a super Easter. It doesn't have to be because I'm turning it into a piece of decor that I can use for spring and it's not like super Eastery. So anyway, that's the palette. Really pretty. I really like all of the colors that are in it and I'm using DMC and I'm using all the called for, but my favorite thing that I got at Stitchville is actually the fabric I chose. So it calls for white Ada 14 count. I measured the thing I want to put, um, the way they finished it was they put it on a galvanized, like, um, planter that hangs flat against the wall. And I have something like that, but I want, and they mounted their thing on felt and I wanted to do that cause I really like it. But, um, their project on a 14 count is like five by five. And I think that's a little too big for the size of planter that I have. So I actually went with an 18 count. I was going to get a 16 count, but I love this fabric. It's really pretty. It just reminds me of like a sun, a spring sky, like it's white, but then there's like these brownish grayish swirls. And I just think that gives the sky movement instead of just having like a plain white Ada. So this was $7. The piece is 12 by 16. It's too big for what I need. So I'll be able to get, an, you know, a piece out for another project. But I just thought it was really pretty. And what's the company? I don't think it says. Oh, yeah. It just says Smoky White is the color. I don't know what company. But that's from Stitchville and I absolutely adore it. So, um, cause originally I just went to get the white Ada and then I saw that and I was like, Oh, I really like that. And then, so that's what I got at Stitchville. Then I went to Hobby Lobby and at Hobby Lobby, I got the canvas that I need plastic canvas, white perforated. It is plastic, which is what I wanted. I said plastic canvas. Wow. Um, and it's 14 count. So I don't know if you can see that. I don't know that I have a need. I probably needed a 24 not 24, 20, 28 needle. Is that smaller? Yeah. I don't know if the 26 is going to fit in these holes. Hmm. That could be interesting. I'll see. I'll see. I might need a slightly narrower. 
needle. Actually, I should try it here in the parking lot before I leave because I could always run back into Hobby Lobby because um, I got some 26s. I do buy my needles at Hobby Lobby. I really like them. They're um, 26 count. They're good for so many different projects, although I'm not sure they're going to fit in those holes. So I will try that before I leave. And if those are too big, I can get some 28s. I think it gets smaller as the number gets bigger. So, um, yeah. Okay. And then to also for that same project, not for that same, for the bunny market project, um, I got some felt. I wasn't sure what color I'm going to want to use. So here's the, here's all the colors. I just don't know what direction I want to go. This is what they did in the, in the, um, sample piece, like in the piece that's in the magazine they use this tan so I really don't think I want to do tan but you know it's only 25 cents I was like well I'm gonna get the color they used and then I'm gonna get some others and I can decide once the piece is already stitched so I got a purple I almost wanted that to be lighter this is the one I think I'm gonna use that darker pink but then I also got a very light blush pink so that would also be pretty so we'll see um once I figure out, once I stitch it, and then I also figure out what flowers, because I'm pretty sure I want to do like they did, which was like pink peonies. So that's why I think I wouldn't go with this, because this is probably going to be the color of the peonies that I have. Um, but this would work. It would be a nice accent. Or just going with purple might be nice. I don't know. So we'll see. And then the other unplanned purchase. <laughs> you will see this in my videos. I plan to put it behind me, um, on the wall behind me, on a little shelf that I have there. Stitch Queen, that's right. <laughs> it was only $4.99. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get that. <laughs> Isn't that fabulous? I love it. So that will go behind me in my videos. I thought that would be fun. Have a good day and let's get back to the rest of my floss tube video, which will be filmed at some point in the future from the time I'm in right now. <laughs> okay, yeah, so that was my fun Hobby Lobby haul. You can see here, I don't know if you've noticed it. Here's my Stitch Queen sign i thought that was so cute i went to stitchville which and this might be my last trip i might go one more time um and mostly the thing i'm gonna probably miss the most from stitchville is like inspiration you go in there and you just can see things on the walls and it's just different than trying to find things online it's just a different experience if you ever have an opportunity to go to a cross stitch store and you like to cross stitch i highly recommend going because it's just very inspirational but the other thing i really like is to be able to go and touch and see the fabrics and so it's hard to shop for fabrics online i think i've often just gone to stitchville i was spoiled i suppose so what i did was i just stocked up on fabric not stocked up i mean it's stocked up for me for most people this is not stocked up but i bought several um really nice pieces of fabric that i know i will use um for different projects i have some things in mind they're all 18 count so i got 18 count i don't know what nb stands for i don't know who the maker is nb cookie dough so that's this one and they were all 25 percent off of the cuts so that's cookie dough this is 18 count parchment it's like an off-white and oh i don't know if you can kind of see this one's like um dyed so it has like modeling in it which looks cool this one also has some modeling in it it's um broom grass 18 count broom grass and then um mocha light mocha so yeah i really am pleased with those okay and then also I got, well, I got this because I absolutely love it. Um, it comes with the fabric. It's called Samplings Number no. 2 by Brenda Gervais. Uh, the company is With Thy Needle and Thread. And yeah. And so, but you can see like normally it would have been $18, but I got 25% off. So, and they're just so cute. So I'm going to make those and fill them and have them for next Easter. I'm going to put them in a cheese box. Oh. I think that's going to look adorable. Actually, if I think of it, I will insert a picture of what, how Stitchville had them stitched up as a model and in a little basket. I thought it was so cute. I'll insert that here. So yeah, I'm super pleased with this. I will be making these by next Easter. That's I also got the 2024 Prairie Schooler Sampler Santa. Wow. <laughs> 
Prairie Schooler Santa. And I got three pieces of the called for fabric for the Prairie Schooler um, Santas, which is uh, 18 count Davos. And so I have a plan in my head to do five Santas. I only have four pieces of fabric. I'll have to get another one from somewhere, maybe in Blue Earth. Maybe I'll take a trip up there and hopefully be able to get that there or I'll try to find it online. So yeah, so that's my fabric purchases and that kit. And then I also got this because again, it was 25% off and it's the whole kit. It's called Creative Needle Art Spooky Cat and Pumpkin. And it comes with the tin. And really the reason I wanted to do this is so I could have one to see how they do it there, you know, it comes with instructions and then I can reproduce it with other patterns that I even have, you know, if I have small um, motifs or whatever, I can make others, um, but this way I'll know how to do it. So I thought it was worth it to get one kit so that I would really know how to do it. And then I got this, this is so pretty. Um, it's called the anniversary. It's kind of like a sampler style. And I want to do this in honor of me and Chris and our 25th work. It's, we're going to hit, we're actually at, uh, 27 years now, but I never stitched anything for our 25th and I really would like to, and I'm fine with, you know, whatever, who cares if it's not done by the 25th, you know, like, okay, hopefully I'll have it done by, you know, our 28th, but that's fine. Um, but I thought it would be neat to get something that was like memorable from Stitchville as like a last thing you know last pattern that I got there and I think I'm going to stitch this on this piece of fabric the um, cookie dough because I think it calls for uh, vintage country mocha but I think that this will work really well so that is my plan there I don't have the kit I don't have the um, threads for it or anything I didn't kit it up or anything I just I just have the pattern and the fabric plan so okay so I think that is all. I think we've come to the end of what I wanted to share with you. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope I didn't leave anything out. It's possible I did. <laughs> but anyway, I will see you again in about a month. And hopefully I will have a new start. Hopefully the cross stitcher in residence. Who knows? I could have it done by then. And um, yeah, I will definitely have my um, flea market flowers done. That is my plan to finish this week. So I hope you're enjoying your stitching. Or if you don't stitch, I hope you just enjoy hanging out with me. Um, enjoy the nice weather if you're having some. And I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.